Women's Final Four Friday night. There. Men's is Saturday night. Let's bring in former UCF great B.J. Taylor, who has a ranking of the top five players in the Final Four, the men's Final Four. I, I know you're a huge Caitlin Clark fan. Where would you put Caitlin Clark if you ranked her alongside the men? Well, you know what, Chris? I, I'm glad you asked that question because I'm going to be completely honest with you. She wouldn't even be on my list of top five because she's in a class of her own. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even list her. We would have to start listing the goats of college basketball of all time. We're talking about our Kareem Abdul-Jabbars. You throw a Caitlin Clark in there, Cheryl Swoops, right? We'd have to go with the all-time greats, the Christian Leitners. That's the only list Caitlin Clark is making because she has moved out of her own class of current college basketball players. She is on her own with the greats. Class of her own. So let's rank the top five men. We're going to rank them five, four, three, two, one, and at number five it's a UConn player and they are the only team with multiple players on your list who's number five yeah, we got to start with Tristan Newton, right? The lead guard for the UConn Husky. He's been the catalyst for their offense throughout the season, right? The thing you love about Tristan Newton is the fact that he gets it done in a multitude of ways, right? He scores, he passes, and he rebounds at an elite level. And as the tournament has moved on, we've even seen his perimeter defense begin to improve, right? So Tristan Newton is that guy for the UConn Huskies that, hey, if they're ever actually in a close game, which we're not sure is going to happen. It doesn't look like that. If they are in a close game, they're going to go to Tristan Newton down the stretch. Your guy at number four is going to try to keep that a close game. An 11.5 point spread. Alabama's Mark Spears comes in at four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark Spears. He, he's Spears, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chris. He, he's just that guy that, that you can rely on. Right, there's certain things in your life that you can count on and you always can depend on them. Mark Sears is that guy for Alabama. Each and every night he goes out on the floor. He's steady, he's dependable, and it always seems like when they need a big shot, he's the one to take and make that look. Right, you saw him the other night. The game got a little tight there down the stretch. He comes off that ball screen, knocks down the triple as the defender goes under the screen. You need big time guards to make big time plays this time of year. You look at the 23 points he had against Clemson in the Elite Eight. 40 minutes he played against UNC, played the entire game. He's the coach on the floor for Alabama, and they would not be in the Final Four if it wasn't for the play of Mark Sears. We always say guards win in March, and, and for the most part, that is the case. But this season, the resurgence of the big man, and one of the big men that Alabama's going to have to deal with is Donovan Klingon of UConn. He's shooting 65% BJ, and when he can test shots, opponents only shooting 24% against him. Yeah, honestly, you know, if it wasn't for this 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 surge of, of Zach Eady over the past two years and the recent surge of DJ Burns, Donovan Klingon would have been at the top of my list. What he's doing on both offense and defense, you see him right there being juxtaposed with Danny Manning and the things he was able to do. He's very similar to Coach Danny Manning in the way that he plays and affects the game. But when you look at his dominant paint presence, it, it's so special because, you know, you look at it, 22 points, 10 rebounds, 5 blocks against Illinois. He was the difference in that game. Once they started to stretch that lead, Terrence Shannon was trying to get downhill. Marcus Domas, you could tell those guys were hesitant to make plays in the paint around Donovan Klingon. And the biggest thing I'll say for him is this. If Purdue is to make it to the national championship, which they're favored to do, he will have his toughest matchup in the national championship, obviously going up against Zach Eady. So as he, even though he's been extremely important all season long, never more important than he'll be in a national championship matched up against the best player in college basketball. A lot of people projecting ahead and looking forward to that. But first things first, Edie's got to go up against DJ Burns, who comes in at number two. He is the fan favorite in the Final Four. Our research team comparing him to to big baby Glenn Davis from 2006, that LSU team that made the Final Four. Yeah, he gets all the comparisons, right? He gets the, the the big baby comparison. He gets the Zach Randolph comparison because of the body type and both being lefties. My favorite comparison that I've seen was that he's very similar to Zion Williamson without the athleticism, hmm. which is kind of crazy to think about. You think of Zion Williamson without athleticism, it's kind of mind-boggling but it nevertheless DJ Burns is just as effective of a player right you look at the body types right there both similar we're saying DJ Burns is 275 he's definitely 300 I'm just gonna keep it real he gotta be 300 pounds that guy is a force down low and you can tell there was a play the other night where Jeremy Roche stepped over to take a charge and you feared for his life 
when, when DJ Burns came down Ill Hill at him. You were like, oh my gosh, Jeremy, don't try to take that charge again. Just get out the way. Sacrifice the two to live a long, lasting, healthy life because you're risking it. But you look at him here. There's nothing Duke can do with him. I would expect for Purdue to have to send some extra help at him because I know they're going to put Zach Eady on him, but you see his agility? I don't know if Zach is going to be able to deal with that the way everyone thinks he is. He's going to make it tough on him? Yes. But this guy is playing with the utmost confidence. His team is playing with the utmost confidence. And you got to give a shout-out to DJ Horn as well. He was another guy I considered putting in this spot, the leading scorer for the Wolfpack. They're going to be a force, man. They're right now playing with more confidence than any team in college basketball. It's not even close. You can tell the Wolfpack, Chris, hey, man, you know, you guys got the 16-17 Warriors with KD uh, in the next game. They'd be like, bring it on. Mm-hmm. I feel like I can beat anybody right now. Nine straight wins, seven of them uh, straight up as underdogs. But going up against Purdue, nine and a half point dog, Zach Eady in the middle. First player since Oscar Robertson in 1960 to lead the country in scoring and make the Final Four. Tell us why he's number one on your list. I mean, there's, there's, he's everything that could be said about Zach Eady. It seems like it's already been said, but I'm going to try. All right, I'm going to do my best to give him more accolades and show him more love, right? You look at the 40.16 rebound game he had in the win over Tennessee. Here's the impressive stat. He left eight free throws on the table. He could have almost had 50 and 16. He, he didn't even play up to his potential against Tennessee, which is really, really scary for the rest of the field, right? You know, if you were to go into UConn's locker room right now and you were to talk to them, you would say, hey, you know, who do you, who do you guys want to play in the next round? They're going to give you that coach speak. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We, we'll play whoever we have to play. But in reality, they know this is the one guy. He is, the, he is the, the kryptonite to their Superman team, which is Zach Eady. If this guy gets out there and has the performances that he's had throughout the season, he could be that one-off, that generational talent, that unique force that is able to knock down the super team, which is the UConn Huskies. And if anybody can do it, it's going to be Zach Eady. If anybody can throw lobs to him, it's you, because you're used to throwing lobs to big guys. 7-6 <laughs> taco fall back in the days at UCF. What's it like throwing it to a guy like that, Eady, coming in at 7-4? Well, you know what happens? You just you drive, and you're as a player, you're like, okay, I gotta make the right play. I gotta make the right play. And then, when in doubt, when you don't know what to do, you just put it over there, <laughs> right? You put it up high, and you say, "Big fella, please go get it," because nobody else should be able to get it in a place where you are. It's similar to when Matthew Stafford had Calvin Johnson Megatron on his team, and it was like, "Hey, man, in doubt, just throw it over to 81. He's bigger and taller than everyone. Let's let's just have have our way with that." That's the same way it is when you're playing with the Zachy Deer or Taco Fall. They're the ultimate bailout whenever you get in the lane. You're like, "I don't know what to do. Just throw it up to the big fella. He'll probably go get it." And he's number one on B.J. Taylor's list of players in the Final Four, ranking them one through five here as we get set to get going in the Final Four on Saturday from Glendale, Arizona, where the Cardinals play. B.J., thank you so much. Latest Eye on College Basketball podcast recorded yesterday. It's a, it's a good one. Ian Eagle joins the show ahead of his first Final Four for CBS, taking over for Jim Nance.